Hi, my name's Jonathan Weinberg. Um, I'm an artist and curator, and I use fountain pens to write, but primarily to draw with, or just as much to draw with. I, I have to admit, lately I've been using them a lot more to write with because I'm so in love with fountain pens. But um, my reviews are, are trying to focus uh, on drawing, and um, over the past few months, I've done several reviews of particular pens and talked about flex nibs and things like that. But one thing I haven't talked about is the ink. And after all, the ink is really important, particularly if you're making art. Mostly, I use black ink. And um, uh, I, there are kind of three inks that I like a lot. I use Plot Pilot uh, Namaki Black Ink. And then also uh, uh, Pilot's uh, Taki Sumi, which is more expensive. And the least expensive ink that I, I like a lot is um, Waterman Black Intense Ink. And that, that might surprise people. Um, uh, now, I would say that none of those inks are, are waterproof or water resistant. So there'll be more about that later. But over the last year, thinking about doing a review like this and just for the fun of it, I've been almost, I would say, collecting different black inks and trying out different inks that I hear about. Um, um, in terms of um, whether an ink is um, water resistant, um, it's interesting that um, uh, that is really one of the difficulties, the problems. Um, uh, you know, people, it's, it's very controversial about, about inks and, and what effect they have on particular pens. And, um, and of course, when you have a very expensive fountain pen, you don't want to put ink into it that's going to hurt it or be corrosive. Now, most artists are familiar, if they're not, not using a fountain pen, but they're using a dip pen or they're using a brush to put on ink, um, they're most familiar with India ink, which is a carbon-based ink, um, but it also uh, typically contains shellac. And so you don't want to put ink, India ink into a fountain pen because when it dries, it will literally ruin the nibs. There are India inks that have been developed by companies like Platinum and Pelican, which I'm actually going to uh, do some testing out here, that don't contain shellac and are carbon-based and um, are, are reasonably okay to use in fountain pens, but as long as you don't, you know, abuse it and just let the pen sit around for, for months and months and months and never, never um, clean them out. Um, uh, and now, as I say, there are all kinds of issues about um, pen uh, inks in terms of uh, questions of uh, their suitability, because it's not just about um, what does the ink do to the pen, it also what does it do to the paper. And that comes to the question of, um, uh, you know, the thickness of the ink and the amount of dyes or pigments in it. And then the other issue is one of pH, you know, how acidic it is or alkaline is the um, ink, because that could have a corrosive effect on um, your pen. Um, I think that's a really big issue with people who um, have vintage pens because of the kinds of materials uh, a vintage pen could be um, uh, worked with. But I, I was talking with a pen collector who collects um, Parker 51s, and there was a kind of ink that Parker sold, and particularly for Parker 51s and supposedly in the day, it was really quite corrosive to um, to the pens. So this has been a kind of ongoing um, issue, all right. Um, Noodlers claims that all of their inks are pH neutral. And Noodlers is really interesting because they make so many different kinds of black ink um, uh, that target particular issues. For example, they make Bernacki black ink which dries quickly, or they make X feather, which supposedly doesn't feather so much, so you can use it on cheaper paper. Feathering is when it sort of spreads and looks kind of um, uh, uh, out of focus, right? And cheaper paper is going to feather with ink more than other 
kinds of paper. There's also the question of how the ink, how much ink you're putting on the paper. Um, so the more ink that you tend to put on the paper, the darker it's going to look, obviously. And one of the problems with ink swatches and the way in which you look at ink in a lot of reviews is that they use a brush or they use a Q-tip to kind of smear the ink onto a piece of paper. And that's not the way a pen puts ink down onto a piece of paper. So it tends to, ink tends to look grayer when you put it onto a, a, a swatch like that. Now, I've done some experimenting where I use the pen itself to sort of make the square, but the problem with that is that a medium nib or a fine nib tends to scratch when you do a lot of that because the paper gets so um, clotted with ink and that picks up the paper and that doesn't work so well. And of course, that's again, not the way most people are using a fountain pen. Um, you could use a, 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 a bold or a bent nib to do that, but then you're doing something that's closer to putting the ink down with a brush. And again, it's gonna to tend to look grayer when you do that or have more shading. The ink is gonna have more shading. Um, uh, so, you know, all these different factors come into uh, play. And in general with these reviews, you know, like the typical, I've said this before, when you do a, a, a test and you write a sentence and you, you know, it's almost, in a way, it's fun to look at that. And you sometimes get a sense of, well, the pen is smooth or uh, scratchy immediately, but you don't really know how the pen is going to work until you've used it for writing pages and pages. And the same thing is with ink. You really don't know how well, particularly how it's going to flow in pens. Um, uh, I have had particular people say, when I've had trouble with a pen, they'll ask, what kind of ink are you using? And um, they'll say, oh my goodness, well, you can't use that ink. That's the problem. Your ink is the wrong ink. You should use a different kind of ink. And, and it is true. That's one of the reasons why I like the Takisumi ink. I think it flows very beautifully. It also comes in a gorgeous bottle, and it may be, and it looks so nice. So maybe that I'm influenced by how beautiful the bottle is versus... Um, you know, ink that comes, uh, Noodler's ink comes in this very pedestrian bottle, and they give you so much of it that maybe you feel like you're not, you know, it's not as good. Um, you know, people, anyway, people have, have very different experiences. So what, I, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to go through my swatches of the different colors that I have, blacks I have, and just say something a little bit about them. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I have four inks that uh, are supposedly waterproof or let's say water resistant. And I'm um, just for the fun of it, I'm going to wet the inks. I've, I've created a kind of test to wet them and see how uh, water resistant they are. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about that at the end. Hi, so here I've chosen um, six swatches of inks that um, I've already mentioned and um, that I've had a lot of experience using over the last year. Um, and the first one on the top is the Platinum Carbon Black, which is what I've been talking about before. It really is like an India ink, but it doesn't have shellac in it. Now, India ink is made from something that is referred to as lamp black, which is soot. And there are, as I understand it, different ways to make that kind of a carbon material um, in the in the past that use bone or wood or some combination and that is ground very very fine and then it's rehydrated with water um, and and you know there there are many different forms of uh, Indian ink and, it, and it's been made for thousands of years so and I'm sure there are all kinds of secret recipes for it but um, once it dries and sort of binds with the paper, it can become uh, certainly water resistant um, and stains and it conceivably stains. So if you're worried about, let's say you have a plastic pen and a barrel and you put platinum uh, ink into it, um, it is possible that it, it could stain over time, um, you know, particularly if you leave your pens around and let them dry out. So people um, do worry about about the uh, carbon black inks uh, for that reason. Um, you can see 
well, I don't know if you can see. That's the problem also of doing these YouTube <laughs> videos. Um, um, I'm looking at these different um, uh, blacks, and I would say to my eye that the platinum carbon black is one of the most intense of the black blacks here. It also has a certain consistency to it in, in its intensity, less, less shading, um, which uh, I think people um, want. Um, if you look at a, a very popular ink, ink that a lot of people like, loves, which is the Taki Sumi, that's this one, um, which is Pilot Iro Shizuko, uh, more, one of their, their more expensive black ink. What's interesting about that is that it's um, a little lighter. Um, it has more shading to it, which a lot of people like in when they're writing. Um, uh, but it has, I think, a very nice flow when you, it seems to me, when you use it in a pen. Um, and uh, again, it has a nice, a nice consistency to the way in which it, it works as a swatch. Um, uh, another uh, ink that is um, very well respected and also has a kind of deep blackness, particularly when I when I write with it is the Diatramentis document uh, black. But I have to say, when you look at the actual swatch, let's look at that, see if we can compare it together. Um, you know, it's not quite as consistent as the plat platinum black. It, it, to my eye, seems a little warmer than the platinum, but they're both, they're both in the warm uh, range, while the Takisumi is a little cooler, I think, and um, surprisingly, the cheaper black, Pilot Black, isn't that different from, or maybe that isn't surprising, isn't that different from the Takisumi. Um, now, the ink that I like the least in this group is the Noodler's Bulletproof. It you'll notice it has a certain shininess to it, a stickiness. And I noticed when I laid it down, I suspect maybe I should have shook it more, but that's a little worrisome and um, that that happens with it. Um, and, so, and it has a kind of, to me, inconsistency to it. Um, it's least less expensive, though. Uh, you get a lot with noodlers. I think you get three ounces of a big bottle. And actually, I think it's annoying. They fill the bottle right to the top, so you really have to be careful about um, spilling the ink or getting it on your fingers. Um, uh, so, and then there's the least expensive ink here, which is the Waterman Intense Black, which is that I like, and I think is not that different from the two Pilot inks. And uh, from what I understand, my friends who have vintage pens, it's it's considered very uh, very easy on pens, and it has you know long 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 history. Um, uh, we're going to test out some of the claims of waterproofness. Uh, the Diatramentis document ink has a, uh, it's very respected in terms of its archival properties. So that's a, another uh, aspect to this. Uh, one thing to think about with different uh, inks is the dry time, how long it takes to dry. So, for example, um, uh, the Diatramentis Archive ink. Now, this is an ink that is supposed to be particularly archival and um, resisted to acid, you know, acidity. Um, uh, it it, it uh, takes long, seems to take longer to dry than some of the other inks. Um, uh, I, in this group, the one that dries the fastest and is advertised that is the Noodler's Bernanke, Bernanke Black. Um, but you'll notice on that one that that one is sort of one of the least black. It's almost like a dark gray. It's kind of cool. Um, although again, uh, the little black area is one that where I penned it in, and you can see that it's, you know, when you use it as a pen, it's still going to look um, pretty black. The ink that I think is the most disappointing for me, and likes my opinion, is an ink by called Stuart Semple Blank, Blink Black. 
um, which sort of says, you know, kind of advertises itself as being super duper black. And I can't see why it's particularly any more black than many of these other blacks, like the Noodler's No Feather Black or the Noodler's Eel Black. Um, uh, in fact, it's, and it's not nearly as consistent. Um, it's, it's kind of blotchy. And um, uh, so I don't see what's so great about it. Um, uh, the Diamine Onyx Black is, I think, very nice. It's a little lighter, uh, warmer, I, to my eye, than some of the other blacks. Diamine also has a very good reputation in terms of uh, how well it works in pens, in terms of, uh, you know, does it, is it corrosive? Is it going to be a problem for, for a pen? The Noodler's No Feather Black is is uh, good if you're supposedly if you're writing on cheaper paper. As an artist, I'm less likely to use it in that way. Um, the drying is really important in terms of your first of all if you're left-handed, it's so you're worried about you know um, smearing. Um, uh, and also, um, I like to write on paper that. Um, is like rodeo paper, which doesn't, uh, the ink doesn't go through the paper, right? And, uh, but the uh, problem with those kinds of papers is they tend to resist the ink, and so the ink tends to be wet longer, uh, dries longer, takes longer to dry. So it's nice to use an ink that dries quickly if you're writing, right? So that's another uh, factor that's um, important to do, to look at. So I hope that, you know, all this is interesting when you're looking at different inks. Um, I, I, you know, I'm struck in this comparison at um, how uh, different the Bernacchi black appears in comparison to the other, other inks, you know, and that may have to do with how the ink was formulated so that it, it dries quickly. Um, Noodlers is very, uh, this I thought was very interesting. They um, they want people to realize that the ink, the, it's the way the ink is formulated and the way it bonds with paper that makes it dry quickly. Um, they're very uh, worried that people will think, oh, well, it dries so quickly and that that's going to do something to wreck your pen. At least they claim that that's not the case. It has to do with the way the chemi chemistry of the paper bonds with the ink. And that's, you know, that is a really key factor in terms of how these different inks are um, created. Okay, I'm going to use my my handy dollar pens from Pakistan to uh, test this out. I'm using the Pelican Ink, black, just a little tree drawing. Now I'm trying out Noodler's um, Bulletproof Black. Okay, so now I'm going to do my little uh, waterproofing test. Now here, I don't know if this is a spoiler alert, or, um, uh, but it's a caveat, which is that, um, you know, to some degree, I believe that, that all these inks are using carbon, 
And uh, as I said before, with India ink that uh, you use with a dip pen, uh, there's shellac in the ink or some kind of glue, and that helps seal the carbon into the paper from what I understand it. So when you take that away, you take away the ability to some degree of the ink to be waterproof because some of the carbon, which is after all originally soot, doesn't adhere itself to the paper. It kind of sits on the paper depending on the absorbency of the paper, I suppose how you write, uh, the nib, all those different things. So even though some of the ink is going to be waterproof, some of it is going to smear. Um, and that also can be affected by how long you're allowing the ink to dry. So if there were several days go by, it might be uh, better than if, uh, in terms of waterproof, than, um, than if you tried it out a few hours later. So there are all different factors, again, in terms of the uh, ability of the ink to be uh, waterproof. Oh, okay, so now I'm going to try it out. So this is the platinum carbon, and that that's very impressive. You can see that it's hardly smearing at all. I'll go over the writing. Hardly anything at all. That's very good. Here is the uh, Diatramentus. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. It's, as I understand it, Dutch company. Oh, and look at that. That's also very impressive. Hmm. Excellent. All right. So now, I'm going to try the Pelican one. Ah, uh, that smears a little bit more. You can see this a little more. Still, well, pretty good. And now, I'm going to try the Noodlers. And there is some gray. Okay, so looking at this, I think you can see that um, both the Platinum Carbon Black and the Diatramentus Document Black are perfect, really. Um, I think there's the slightest, slightest maybe bleeding that you might see in the drawing. Um, let's see if you can catch that. But it's, it's almost perfect and nothing in the writing. So that's very impressive. Now, I would say that the Platinum Carbon Black is considerably less expensive than the Diatramentus Document Black. Um, uh, you get much more in the bottle, and you can get like a, I think it's 60 milliliters of Platinum Carbon Black for around $15, while the Diatramentus Document Black is 45 milliliters, and that comes, tends to run after shipping and everything around $25. Um, I will say, though, it may have other properties that make it uh, more archival, you know, maybe it holds, it holds up better in light, and... Um, it also is certified to be used to sign legal documents, and I don't think that's true of the platinum carbon black. So that's that's a difference that may be worth the money. Um, the least good of these is the Pelican Fountain uh, ink, but you know it didn't do it. It's not terrible, you know, and it's much less expensive. Um, than uh, the Diatramentus. I, actually, I should say it's not, I, I forget that the Platinum comes in a bigger bottle. So um, it may turn out that there's, it's similarly priced. So that's, I forgot about that. Um, but uh, it's cheaper than Diatramentus document black. 
and the Noodler's Bulletproof Black is probably the least expensive, given the fact you get three so much of it. Um, it it also smears somewhat. You know, there is some some uh, uh, smearing, but it isn't. You know, online you read a lot of people giving it really. You know, saying, "Oh, it's just water resistant." This this is pretty good. You know, um, if one's worried about you know one's writing disappearing in a rainstorm, this seems to me pretty good. It it um, uh, would still if you're doing a watercolor over it the gray would still tend to go into your colors a little bit, so uh, people might not like that. Um, as I said, I kind of like that when I'm doing a watercolor with pen. I like the way the bleeding effect, that can be quite nice. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think that this it might work very well for people, a kind of nice compromise. So I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. When you're looking at the Pelican, the actual drawing, it also is not is not that bad. Um, but the Platinum, which is, you know, tr traditionally people in the world of drawing with fountain pens uh, love the Platinum Carbon Black. And it is a very, it is very black. Um, you can see why that is. Um, and, and it just becomes a kind of issue of, uh, you know, how of, of where you sit in terms of its effect on your pens. Um, I have noticed, for example, uh, this is with the Diatramentus document in black, that if I use it in a, um, a eyedropper, uh, uh, with the eyedropper, that it's really, really hard to get the black out of the, completely out of the eyedropper. So that's a sign, you know, that it will, it will probably stain your pen, um, you know, but but also I suppose if one uses a good flush, pen flush, so you, can, you can get it out. Um, but you have to be careful, I suppose, and it depends on how expensive a pen you have. I don't know if I would use it in a really expensive vintage pen, or I don't I don't use it in my Waterman uh, 52, so that's another, another thing to think about. So, uh, uh, that's my thoughts about this. Finally, I would say that if you're looking for an inexpensive ink for, uh, that's not waterproof, um, I'm, I'm very impressed with the Waterman um, uh, Intense Black, which you can get for a bottle for like $8. And as I say, my friends who have vintage pens speak very, very highly about it in terms of that. It's not quite as black as... Uh, these platinum carbon black, but it is just as intense to my eye as the Takisumi, and it flows very well, and it has a very good reputation. So if you're looking for the bargain here, uh, I would go with the Waterman black, Intense Black. All right, that, if you enjoyed this, uh, please uh, subscribe and, uh, you know, say you like it etc. And uh, I look forward to the next uh, pen discussion. Bye.